plates here, uh, the rear former plates. So just put in one stainless steel 42 rivet that comes with it. Um, you kind of bend it around the Longeron tube to get that shape out of it, but this will help protect the uh, push-pull tube. I borrowed the um, a bolt, an AN3 10 bolt for uh, the rudder horn from um, basically my um, my uh, uh, another kit, another another group. So just kind of, um, I've got one shipped to me. I don't know for whatever reason. I might have lost one. I might have not have had. I, I might have used it. Um, I just didn't see what package it came from, but. Got another bolt coming, so I just borrowed one, and I can connect the uh, the rudders up here. This is pretty cool. So you can see if you if you move, you get the full full rudder travel. And you can put it right about in the middle there, about approximately. And uh, what I'll do later today is actually um, after I get this connected and these former plates on, I'm going to come over here and connect the nose wheel steering linkages right. Uh, see if I can see it here in the video, um, right here to the rotor pedals. So there's just two uh, push-pull tubes for that. And then that should be done. See how it just allows for the push-pull tube to be protected from the fabric and then that's where the fabric starts so the fabric starts here and it goes all the way so from here all the way down to the to the uh, nose cone pieces you're gonna put on right there in the front right in front of the throttles another thing I'm gonna do here pretty soon is um, I've got uh, I, I didn't mention this but I've got my engine um, being prepared right now from uh, from uh, a great guy out in Oregon, his name is Art, and uh, he purchased uh, his Excalibur um, from a guy named uh, Mike Height, who uh, has moved to Alaska. You know, he moved to Alaska, I think, what nine years ago or so. And uh, this this uh, Excalibur had um, the Hearth 3202 engine, and uh, the cool thing is, is um, it hasn't been used. It's only got like four hours on it, so I got a really good deal, like 55% off of that engine which I'm really excited about. It's in great shape. Uh, so that's going to be coming here pretty soon. I'm going to get the battery set up and then do you know the power to the starter and all that stuff, the wiring, the fuel. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really rounding a corner here doing little things and I know as soon as I get the wiring done that's kind of just hanging over my head. Getting the wiring, getting the electrical done. The fuel not so much but that's kind of hanging over my head as well. Making sure the engine's up and running. Uh, I think it's a Sensodec prop so um, uh, I'm excited. So that'll be that'll be coming here shortly. I think it's going to ship in the next few days. Hey, what I did here, this is kind of an, a nice little trick you can do, um, is just put a uh, a bungee, but you got to get the um, the ones with like the aluminum heads um, or the metal heads, metal hooks, so that you can tighten it down. Um, and uh, I just put a hole in there. Uh, what typically guys will do is just they'll kind of put the bigger hooks in around the seat, but I couldn't fit mine, so I just drilled a hole, and it's in there. And I then you come down to the lower um, elevator push pull tube, drill a hole in that, and then you can put as many as you need to 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 give the uh, to give kind of a neutral balance um, on the stick. So wherever you put the stick, it'll stay, so it balances out the weight of the elevators. And so I just did a couple extras, and they're in there pretty tight. <clears throat> because uh, I had small ones, that's all I could find uh, without, you know, getting them online or whatever. I just, I got them at uh, Home Depot. But that's how you do it. You just put them in there and it's going to hold. It's not a ton of tension on there and there's three of them helping out. But again, it's pretty cool because you just, you set the, set the elevator where you want it. And it uh, holds your position. Of course, obviously, if you have winds, right, it's going to bang around. But that's when you, you put a gust lock or something on your controls. Fastening the 
nose cone up to the uh, A down tubes um, using these little brackets. So what you want to do is measure half the bracket. It's a foot long, so six inches, and then uh, put three holes on one side. Those are three sixteenths holes and then two on the other. Uh, the three are going to be for aluminum uh, 64 rivets and then these will be for screws because you want to attach all the nose cone with screws onto the, uh, the, the these metal strips and then of course the side metal strips here <clears throat> where the fabric's going to go. But anyway, you just put it on like that. You mark your first hole and you're gonna I'm going to drill that, put the uh, aluminum rivet in and then mark this bottom hole here. Right down there you can see I did that side. Uh, you mark the bottom hole and then um, uh, you can you can put the screw in and then go ahead and do the rest of your of your uh, riveting and then do your last screw So that's the way to do it. Make sure it's where you want it to be I got some duct tape there just holding it in the meantime But uh, yeah, and then I'll come in after that and I'll put these um, These uh, sheets on the side These side sheets where we attach the um, fabric to and then that'll be on both sides And then I can take off the nose cone. It'll just be on there um, just to kind of um, you know, sort of size it up here. I'm just again waiting on the engine. Engine will be coming. And um, I can do a lot of the, the bulk of the stuff that I have remaining to do once the engine comes. Also, I've ordered some avionics. Uh, I'm looking at an ADSB transponder bundle uh, from, from uh, Aircraft Spruce. That's what I'm gonna get, I think, for that. And I'll probably end up cutting a hole in here and putting the transponder um, uh, in there. And then I think I might put my Hobbs meter here in the middle down below and then on that side I'll probably go ahead and, and I might put my ELT in there so um, I'll have those and then I'll have you know circuit breakers for whatever I need. ELT doesn't need it um, and the transponder needs a uh, I think it's a 3 amp the one I'm looking at it's about a 3 amp circuit breaker but uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to put the transponder yet I might just either mount it on the up here kind of close to me so it'll be close to the controller the controller is going to be what's installed and then uh, of course the antenna you know you run the GPS antenna to the back but um, I'm looking at a, uh, it's a, it's Trig, Trig's um, brand, and I think it's the, like the T, T22 transponder, something like that, but it's the Mode S with, uh, with uh, ADSB, because I'm under the Mode C veil, the 30 mile veil of Hartsfield, so I've got to do that. And then uh, ELT will go back here, I'll mount it back here, so I'm, I'm getting some pricing from Tom and see what we can do, and um, yeah, and then be able to... To do those with the Hobbs meter is pretty much all I've got, and then of course I'll install the ignition. Put the side strip on here, and do five rivets underneath here. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, you see how when you're putting this thing on, you want to make sure it goes on nice and smooth to the side. And I'm going to put in a screw every six inches. And then you got to come under here, and I got to do some finagling underneath the nose wheel. Of course, you know, a lot of times when people put these things on, they don't have the nose wheel around here. But um, uh, I guess some do, some don't. But it makes it a little bit more challenging to put this on. But we'll get it. for the battery. Uh, here's the front brace for it um, and uh, all you do is you just get a, a one inch aluminum uh, angle uh, bracket and uh, you know Home Depot sells this one. This one was like a, a four foot section for like 750 and uh, you, you cut it. You can hacksaw bandsaw it and I just cut it right there so it's got an attach point on the bottom and uh, drill the hole and uh, just put a bolt in a fastener through there and um, it got lock nuts on it. So that'll be the hard part. And then the other one will be just done up here in the front and the battery will go this way.